Earlier this year, Hanjin, the world's seventh largest shipping company, collapsed with a reported 14 billion U.S. dollars worth of cargo tied up on its ships. The bankruptcy illustrates the difficulties of an industry with low margins and high costs. Moody's predicted a fall in profits of 7 to 10 percent for this year. On top of that, fraud is on the rise in the industry. There's tremendous amounts of fraud where people present fraudulent bills of lading to receive goods. And I mean, they're say, they talk about maybe 30, 40 percent of bills of lading presented are fraudulent in some way. Blockchain is being looked at as a way to cut costs and fraud in shipping. Bills of lading, the title to the goods being shipped, are currently in paper form and need to be physically sent to several parties during the course of a transaction. These papers can easily be tampered with and are occasionally lost and oftentimes arrive at the destination much later than the goods. Blockchain would do away with the paperwork, putting it all on a digital platform. The bills of lading will essentially be in a smart contract, as well as the funds will be put into es escrow. And so in that smart contract, there will be conditions. And when those conditions are fulfilled and the goods are delivered and delivered in good condition, then the, the funds will be released and the, the, the title, which is the ownership, the bills of lading, mm -hmm. will be released to the receiver. The smart contract would work over a blockchain system, a system that immediately gives all parties involved a copy of the transaction in real time, doing away with the need for each party to see the paper document and input it into their system. So there's no mistakes that are being made there. So that flow is happening instantaneous. And it's not just the bill of lading that can utilize blockchain, but the goods themselves. Shipping and Doug Irwin of Chain of Things is working on a device that can track objects in transit and transmits the information over the blockchain. Our, our board here, which is our development board, which is where every one of these ones starts from, um, actually measures quite a bit more uh, GPS again, uh, temperature and humidity, than uh, movement, so an accelerometer, which is also actually in the, in the boat tracker. Uh, then we've got a, an altimeter for pressure. Is this also good for things like, for indi an industry like logistics, say shipping? Yes, yes. Actually, we've, we've been working with a number of large shipping companies to uh, track containers and understand what's going on environmentally inside. You can get a very clear picture of what's going on in that mystery 28 days when your boat is, uh, is on water and, and in the middle of the ocean. What are the things you want to track or have knowledge about? produce and, and anything that needs to be temperature controlled. Mm -hmm. um, others are, are probably uh, time sensitive items that uh, are, are stuck to a very specific buying or selling cycle. Uh, uh, and then high value uh, units that, uh, that are subject to theft uh, when it arrives at a bonded warehouse potentially. The devices are currently being used on small fishing boats in the Caribbean and Southeast Asia. For a number of, of contested geographies around, um, around the Caribbean and Southeast Asia, uh, this has been really useful to, uh, to the governments, sorting out uh, boundary issues, understanding where overfishing is being done, where, uh, where, where people are playing by the rules and not. For fishermen who are part of fair trade fishing, the trackers confirm whether or not they fished in sustainable waters. When we deployed this in Mexico, of, of fishermen that are part of a uh, fair trade uh, a certified port uh, actually uh, receiving 20 percent more uh, return on their on their average catch because it could be instantly verified and there was no uh, there was no dispute about where they have been and where they've been fishing so for consumers looking to buy only sustainably bred or caught food these trackers and the blockchain can have a direct impact on everyday life there are over six billion connected intelligent devices today things like your smartwatch your webcam even your light bulbs and yet many of these don't work over a secure system which is why giving these devices unique ids is important Connor Caldwell, who works with Doug, says assigning IDs that are saved on a blockchain will help identify if they have been hacked.
Earlier this year, millions of IoT or Internet of Things devices were hacked, taking down sites like Reddit, Twitter, CNN, and many more. Their small processors can be used to uh, call up different domains and, and basically uh, clog up everything and, and shut down the site. He says the ID couldn't prevent hacks, but it would be able to quickly identify devices that have been compromised so they could be shut down before an attack takes place or immediately after. An attack can cost a targeted business over $40,000 an hour in lost revenue. We want to make sure that you know you can trust the sensor that's advising your self-driving car or advising you to do something or advising an industrial control system. What is it, the heart he hopes that this device can be shrunk down even smaller and be put into every IoT device in the factory so it comes out with a unique identity and gets stored on a public blockchain. Gartner estimates that by 2020 there will be over 20 billion IoT devices. Uh, having billions of sensors everywhere has never been done before, and so it's, it's, a new, it's a new market. IDC forecasts the market for IoT solutions will grow from $1.9 trillion in 2013 to $7.1 trillion in 2020. Cybercrime in the last year cost $445 billion in lost time, jobs and intellectual property. Microchips govern our cities, our infrastructure, our everyday lives, so making them safe should be a priority.